All right, coaches, we're going to get rolling here. Uh, I think there's a little bit of a lag. We're doing our best. Uh, it's our first live Zoom or uh, our first YouTube live session. So excited to be talking defense tonight. I'm going to do my best to work through the lag here. Um, and tonight we're talking about defense, talking about getting stops on third down or second down. Um, either way, situations you got to try and get yourself off the field. Um, I think it's really important um, that you think about the significance of those situations. Um, honestly, I think we all think about getting off the field. We don't think enough about creating turnovers on second down. And as an offensive guy, you know, I've spent a lot of time thinking, about, okay, if we get second and long, how can I be aggressive as an offensive coach to try and get the first down, keep us from punting and move the drive? Um, and I think as defensive coaches, you can take that and use it um, against offensive coaches and try and create turnovers, obviously in the high school game, punting, um, any, the kicking game is tough, right? You don't have trained school kickers. So those second downs, especially if it's a two and out situation, that's really a turnover in itself. So we're going to talk about three things today that I think from a broad structural standpoint, uh, that you can do, um, in terms of getting stops on second down and, and more than that, trying to force the offense's hand and, and create turnovers. Um, one piece of, uh, of housekeeping, um, I'm going to, if I can get this to roll here, um, make sure if you're, if you're on here, subscribe, like the video, click the bell so you get some notifications. If you're not already following us on Twitter, uh, or Instagram, please do that. Uh, it's a great way, especially Twitter. We're trying to do uh, daily questions, get stuff out to coaches, create kind of that community environment around football right now. We're, we're not able to be on the field in the ways that we'd all like to be. Um, but if you're following us on Twitter, there's lots of great conversation uh, going on there uh, about the Canadian game. And then check out our live clinics coming up the next three Tuesdays. So um, we'll be doing our, obviously, our, our talk tonight on getting stops and turnovers. Next Tuesday, we're going to talk simplifying your vertical passing game. Um, the following Tuesday, we're back on defense, defending RPOs in the Canadian game. Uh, and then Tuesday, April 6th is our last scheduled one, depending on, you know, how these go and, and if people think this is a better medium or a good medium to, to go through this stuff, um, we'll can, we'll extend this, but pairing split zone power switch, uh, and, and jet action and RPOs, uh, in your offense, some really common seeing at a lot of levels right now. And I thought coaches could benefit from, uh, from seeing. So the other thing you can do, um, is if you have a question, please type it in the chat. Um, I hope that we can go back and forth on some of this stuff and, and, and really try and create something that is helpful to you guys, not just a video that you watch and maybe, you know, DM me a question. We can do this live and kind of talk through it. So don't be afraid. Even if you just want to throw, you know, your name and where you're coaching uh, in the chat, that's awesome. Uh, and like I said, if, if you haven't liked the video yet, please do. It'll help us reach more people. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, it helps us and click that bell. So you'll get notifications on when we post new content uh, and when we go live as well. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is kind of what are the important considerations for me on, on second down um, and, and trying to get off the field and create turnovers. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of great mentors at the U sport level. Uh, I was fortunate enough, you know, to play both sides of the ball in high school. And then I've gotten to coach both sides of the ball uh, in summer league. So um, really, I look at this two ways. I look at this as an offensive coordinator saying, what don't I want? defenses to be accountable for and I look at it as a defensive coordinator okay what are my must do's um you know on on second down uh and it all starts with matchups the game's about more so about the players than it is the X's nose I think we all know that I think one of the big dangers coming out of this pandemic is going to be that we've all had this time to learn X's and O's um and ultimately we're going to have to make some decisions about you know what we choose to use with our players uh, and ultimately that comes down to matchup. So if, uh, if you're defending an offense with an elite receiver, maybe the running back is the best player and they get him involved in the passing game. You know, maybe you have a super mobile quarterback. Um, you know, maybe you're playing a team with a great offensive line. Uh, those matchups matter, right? It's not, these play calls aren't all created equal. You know, if you have a great pass rusher, um, that allows you to do things differently. If you have an elite cover corner, uh, you know, that allows you to do things differently. Um, so Ultimately, all these decisions are based on your matchups. Um, are you dealing with a mobile quarterback? And, and that's probably the number one uh, thing right now that's probably changed on second down um, is the, the prevalence of mobile quarterbacks and what mobile quarterbacks can do as throwers. 
Uh, I've even seen, you know, coaching in the OPFL the last four years, um, you know, quarterbacks, the, the types of passes we have to defend are so much different than they were five years ago because athletic quarterbacks are capable of much more in and out of the pocket. Um, and it creates a huge challenge. And that's a big deciding factor, whether it's deciding what types of pressures to use or the coverages you play, um, you know, being aware of what the quarterback can do athletically is important. Uh, you know, where is their number one? Where's their number one receiver? Uh, you know, some people, most people obviously play the number one receiver as the boundary wide out. Um, you'll play some teams. I remember we defended Clark Barnes and Tommy Neld three years ago in the OPFL. So they had two number one receivers. You know, where are those guys going to be on second down? Are they going to move their number one on second down? I think especially in high school, um, you know, if you're dealing with a team that's, you know, their offense is running through one or two players, you know, maybe maybe that receiver lining up a different spot of the field is going to change where you want to blitz from, the type of coverage you want to play, uh, and ultimately the matchups that get created. Can you get pressure with four? I mean, that's a tried and true thing. I think everyone considers if you can get pressure with four, gives you a lot of options. If you can't, um, you know, it kind of creates a situation where you need to find a way to create pressure um, that's still, you can it puts you in a situation to hold up on the back end. And then field position uh, and situation. Obviously, every play that's drawn up, uh, you know, isn't drawn up with the exact momentum of the game or, um, you know, what, what the team has done previously or where you are, where you are in the field of the game. So what I try to do is take that a little bit out of it uh, in terms of giving you guys a menu of options that you might be able to look at here and see what fits your system. The other thing I try to do with this presentation is keep it really scheme agnostic. Um, so really not have it be centered around, okay, if you're a four down, if you're a three down, if you play this coverage, if you play that coverage, more so ideas that you could use across the board. Um, and I threw a lot of examples in there that, that should help with that. But obviously, you know, if you have a team backed up, um, you know, that might change their their thought process uh, on second down. You might be more likely to get a conservative run play uh, or maybe a shot play if they're really backed up and they're trying to get themselves out of that situation. You know, obviously, maybe if you're transitioning across midfield, especially in three down football, is the team going to go for it on third down? Right. And if you have a team that's going to go for it on third down, all of a sudden that second down where, you know, if it's second and 10, you might say, hey, we gave up seven yards. Great. They're going to punt. Well, now they're in third and three, much more likely to go for it or certainly if it even gets less than that. So field position and, and down and distance are obviously, you know, crucial in other situations within the game. In terms of priority, so this and this is one of the things I spent the most time on in, in this presentation is what are my priorities as a defensive play caller and, and our priorities as a defense uh, on second down? So we want to get off the field, number one, right? We don't want to give up a touchdown. We don't want to give up uh, a first down in that order. So we don't want to give up explosive plays. We want to eliminate explosive plays. And to do that, what you do on second down has to be sound, right? It has to be based on principles. It has to take care of all the things that you're going to deal with um, potentially. And it's got to be teachable. Right. We can draw up great stuff, but if it's not teachable and it's not sound, you're ultimately going to give up explosive plays and, and things are often sound when you draw them up against 22 two back or or 32. Um, but, you know, ultimately, if if your stuff doesn't handle motion, if your stuff doesn't handle this or that, you know, some of the things the other team does best, then you're going to be in a tough situation. Um you want to make them go left. You know, the classic basketball analogy, Bill Belichick talks about this all the time, take away their number one athlete and their top concept. And, and one of the things I think is changing is on some of these teams you'll play, their number one athlete will be their quarterback. And I think how you bring pressure um, or how you try and create pressure really matters in that situation. Um, you know, ultimately you want to say, Hey, if you, if you beat me on second and eight, second and nine, second and 10, um, and, and you get a first down, if it's your second or third best player, and it was on your second or third best play, they're probably not going to do that consistently enough to win the game. Um, but if you're giving up, you know, the number one players often running their number one route, um, you know, if you're giving that up, uh, you know, you're putting yourself in a tough spot to, to be successful. You don't want to let people do what they do best. Speed them up. Uh, you know, another one, I don't think that's groundbreaking, but offense is based on timing. Uh, and, and changing the timing for the offense can change their ability to be effective, create the appearance or presence of pressure. Um, you know, I think a lot of the quarterbacks that I've played uh, in summer ball and, and even watching the OUA, the, the appearance of pressure is often as good as pressure itself. Um, certainly you want to get pressure and get sacks, get the quarterback on the ground, but um, you know, being able to create the sense of pressure can in itself, if you're a little more stable on the back end, that can be a great way to go about it too. 
leverage at the sticks. And, and this is something that I think is more important now um, because offenses are more advanced. Passing games are more advanced. Um, offenses are able to throw option routes. Um, offenses are in a situation where they're able to take advantage of what you give them. So if you're not able to leverage routes at the sticks or have, have defenders in position, you know, to break on routes um, at the sticks or certainly beyond the sticks, you're in trouble. Uh, and you can't get out leveraged underneath as well, right? So you can't, you know, have a situation where, yeah, you're sound on everything at the sticks, but you get out leveraged underneath and, you know, a crossing route turns into a 20 yard play uh, and nothing for free. Um, so, you know, being aggressive in, in predictable areas, you know, on second and long, um, in terms of having leverage at the sticks, you're going to get the dig throws. You're going to get the second level out throws. You're going to get the, the deep curls. Um, you know, those type of routes are, are what you're going to get from the offense. You got to be able to leverage those routes and then nothing late on the quarterback, nothing early on the receiver. If you can look at a, a second and long, if you can, if you can find a way to probably do four of these five things and, and including number one, um, you know, it's going to go a long way uh, to you being successful. So the first variation uh, that I wanted to look at, and I got three, I know I put them on the first slide there, three kind of uh, big picture things you can try and do with some examples of each. So cover two man is a coverage I think it's been around for a long time. I think a lot of people know it, nothing revolutionary here. Um, the two drawings I have on there uh, are, you know, kind of basic old school cover two man. You're playing uh, high, two high players to deter the offense from throwing the ball vertically. Um, and your underneath players can challenge routes at or below the sticks, right? So you're able to get the benefits of man in terms of forcing the quarterback to throw, hopefully into tight windows without the risk of the vertical shots you can typically give up, especially if you're playing aggressive man. Um, the downsides are some of the challenges to this. You're gonna have a light box. Um, you got to rotate from your standard look, whether that's your will coming out of the box um to you know to cover number two weak here or in some way you know to get to too high and man on everybody else you're going to have to take somebody out of the box and if you don't have anything else out of that look that can be a bit of a tell for the offense uh, and mobile quarterbacks can be a huge challenge right so if you're underneath players are all turned and running uh with routes right you get routes that go vertical routes that go towards the sideline um you know routes that drag to one side of the field and all of a sudden the quarterback breaks the pocket and uh it's a huge challenge so Though that's kind of where I see the benefits of the coverage and the, and the challenges of the coverage. Um, we'll go through two other variations of that in a sec, which I think can be really helpful um, in kind of disguising two man and, and playing it from different looks. Um, and I tag this with, uh, I've heard of this called a ton of things because uh, the B gap players have a read. I've heard it called a B stunt. Um, basically anytime on second down, you know, unless you've got guys that can just go. And even if you do, you want to try and create advantages. Uh, we want to try and stunt the front because it makes screen draw a challenge and it makes the escape lanes for the quarterback uh, less predictable and it changes the timing. So um, the B stunt, which we'll talk about in its own slide as well, basically your defensive ends have a two-way go or your C-gap rushers have a two-way go. Um, so they can rush inside or out depending on the set of the tackle. So if they get a, you know, a typical set, they can work the speed rush on the edge um, and attack the tackle up field. If they get a real hard lateral set, they can go inside um, and the two B gap players are going to uh, take the, the guards, get their hands on the guards. Okay. And read the rush of that uh, defensive end. Okay. They're, they're a deterrent to screen draw. And then if that defensive end goes inside, they're going to create a natural stunt and fold outside uh, into contain. So benefits being the elite pass rushers have a two way go. Uh, so if that's a linebacker for you, you may might want to have a linebacker rush in the edge, whether it's a sub package or out of a 30, but you want to get your two best pass rushers in that two-way go position. And they're able to make a real-time adjustment to the O-line set. So they're able to play in real time. Uh, you know, the downsides, the D-line has to read and react. Um, you know, the potential that the defensive tackles have contained. Um, I put in that second drawing under there uh, with two linebackers running it. Um, here, you'd have to peel the back. So if the back released the edge, the edge rushers have them. Uh, and I would have my nose just play screen in that case, really just own the center and and don't even rush. You, you're playing the screen on the inside. Um, so that's a, a way you could potentially get around that. But obviously, if, if your two defensive tackles are, are more run defenders, um, you know, it's not going to be as clean of a look uh, if they have to go contain, particularly a mobile quarterback. But, you know, hopefully you're creating pressure by by using that stunt uh, and that you're able to work together as, as a defensive line group to uh, to contain the quarterback in that situation. 
So basic two man is the first drawing I had up here. Aggressive man coverage uh, underneath. So you cannot give up a slant. Uh, you do not want to give up an underneath out for uh, for anything cheap underneath. You're playing hard inside, forcing. If you're going to get beat anywhere, it's going to be over the top uh, and outside. Okay, and you're and that's where your free safety and in this case your boundary halfback uh, are are playing over top to hopefully play that ball. Especially in high school, quarterbacks often aren't able to. You know, the ball's in the air a long time if they're going to take a shot and uh, your, your free players there can hopefully clean it up. Um, high players are free, must play all routes top down. So you can't, as the as the vertical players here, the vertical defenders, you're on top of everything as deep as it goes, old school deep is the deepest. Uh, and you're going to work together with that underneath coverage to really force the quarterback's hand. Just uh, this is it against uh, some other looks. So 23 right? Your Sam may have to go high and rotate your free safety over. Uh, that's the first diagram there on the left. Um, ultimately, I mean, every team is going to adjust differently. You know, you could, you could have your Sam come into the boundary, for example, just how I drew it up. And then the third one there is against 41. You'll notice that I mugged up the mic in these uh, two pictures. Um, and for me, that's just to create a 5-0 look for the O-line. We'll talk about 5-0 pressures uh, in a minute. Um, but what we want to do is try and get one-on-ones. So if we walk the mic up, you know, that mic, or that center is going to have to help later uh, on the guards uh, or help with the guards later. Uh, and it'll often get them checked into big on big protection instead of a half slide. So in that situation, you're creating a more true one-on-one -on -one for your guys up front. If they release the back, maybe you want to keep the mic at depth um, just to allow him to play it. He doesn't need to be right on the line of scrimmage. Uh, and he certainly has to know, you know, if the back is out, he's got him. Um, you know, whether he releases to either side of the formation, everybody else is in man-to-man. -man. So this second variation is one uh, that I saw really be really successful. Uh, Laurier, Coach V, runs this, uh, has run this in the past. Um, and I thought it was a great adjustment. I actually hadn't seen it uh, until I, I saw it uh, at the university level there. And that's actually to play your will high. Right. One of the challenges uh, with traditional two man is your will linebackers in coverage on on the W receiver. Uh, and obviously that can be a matchup. Again, it comes back to where's their number one. If, you know, they have a really good receiver at two weak um, or at four strong and 41, if you're going to flop the will over, you know, that's a tough cover for the will. Right. So now you're 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 not achieving that goal of of maintaining good matchups. So letting the will play high. And again, this could be a situation where you substitute. Um, certainly if you got second and long and you've got more players that can help you, uh, you know, get some speed on the field. I, I'm a big proponent of that. Um, but in this case, whether it's your starting will or whether it's a, a substitution, um, you know, it just allows you to have your best cover players uh, play the man coverage that the vertical job, right. Is physically a lot easier, um, you know, than the man coverage job underneath. Right. And so to let your will, especially to the boundary, a little less space, obviously, uh, you know, you got to get out of there and make sure you're on top. Um, the, the will can't hold in there, you know, trying to show the disguise and then get out late. He's got to get out early um, and make sure he's on top of anything vertical in the boundary. But especially in the boundary, it's a great way to keep your, your better cover players uh, in the man coverage aspect uh, of the coverage. And this last one, uh, I, I've seen a little bit, um, and I know it's a little more common in the States, and I actually think it's a great match for Canadian defenses um, simply because we get so much one high, right? You get so much free safety high, you know, whether it's cover three, cover one. Um, and so it let it makes it look, you know, the, the rotation and coverage makes it look like you're still playing holds, especially if you're a high school coach that's running a lot of double hold um, or you're playing cover one. You know, the safety is going to rotate down. It, it looks like there's a lot going on to the defense. Um, and uh, ultimately, you know, you're still getting to that same luck where you have two vertical defenders uh, and you're playing man everywhere else underneath. So here the will still has to come out and cover number two. Now your corners are the vertical defenders. Um, you know, especially if, if you were getting, uh, you know, smashed with the corner route was a problem um, or, you know, you want your – maybe your corners – uh, you know, are your fastest guys and, and you want them to be the two over the top players. Um, and especially if your free safety can cover, uh, you know, it's a great, it's a great change up and the concept stays the same. So you could theoretically run more than one of these. Um, 
you know, I would want to base in one and maybe and maybe mix it up. But this would be a great change up um, to be able to show a totally different look. You're not showing that too high early. That can sometimes give this away. Uh, you're rotating to it a little bit later because your corners can be further off, um, you know, than, and change their depth uh, as the ball gets snapped. So good disguise looks like it can look like double hold. Um, and great if your halfbacks are your best man cover players. So if your halfbacks are, are, are really good players, um, you know, which I think can sometimes happen in the high school game, you know, as you get further from the ball, um, you know, you're, you're trying to get your best players in those positions to be close to the football. If your halfbacks are, are really good cover players, um, you know, then, then this is a great option for you as well. A little more on, on the beast stunt. Um, and again, there's a more than one way to run this. You could run this on one side. You don't have to run it on both. Um, if the tackles, you know, take a, a tight set and they don't prevent the ends from getting up the field, then they can, then they can uncork a speed rush and go, right? They don't have to, they don't have to wait and see. And, and it doesn't have to be a really slow read and react. I would tell my guys, you're flying up the field. And if that tackle crosses your face or you get even, then you're going to knife inside and, and, and rip across uh, the offense tackles body and get into that B gap. So the, the tackle and the, and the nose, or if you walk two linebackers up, who's ever doing that B gap read, they're punching the guards and they're just waiting to see what the, what their defensive end does. I know this is pretty common in the CFL. You could run it to one side, you could run it to both. Um, and, you know, I think it gives your best pass rushers a chance to really get home and some freedom uh, and some freedom without compromising the rest of the scheme. Right. Uh, which I think is key. The other, the other big thing I like about this is, especially with mobile quarterbacks, you know, you really want your ends to be the, the guys that have the best chance to make the tackle, right? We want to we wanna be aggressive with those guys. If those are your best two pass rushers, we want to give them the best chance to get to the quarterback. Um, so letting them take advantage of the tackle set uh, and, and, you know, rip, rip inside or, or fly at the C-gap is a great option. You know, it, it makes reading screen draw if the, if the end can go inside a little more challenging for the offense. Um, you just need to be able to read and react inside. And obviously that's not easy, but, um, you know, it's something that I think gives you some benefit with this stunt. So the second kind of main area, uh, that I wanted to talk about, and if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Um, I'm happy to, I'm happy to answer them. I'll see them. I see them as they go. Um, really this one is probably my favorite of, of the three options. Um, and it comes down to what we're getting in terms of passing game uh, on second long. Uh, and that's the play, uh, tri-lock coverage. Uh, I know there's a lot of different names for it. We did a video on it uh, with Coach Vass, uh, who talked about TCU special coverage, which is a version of this. Um, and ultimately, it lets us have leverage on, on routes that break at or near the sticks. It looks like zone and plays like man. Um, which I think is great, especially if you're a quarters team, you know, it, it, in Cambridge, uh, you know, where I coach, we're, we're a quarters team uh, on defense. And this is a great change up for us because it changes the way we fit route concepts out of the same general contour. Um, so it, it, when I say it looks like zone and plays like, man, the pre-snap alignment and depths are very similar to our quarters look, um, but how we're going to respond to routes at different positions is very different. Uh, and we'll get to that in a sec. Um, the, one of the challenges is it becomes man at a certain point. So it becomes about matchups, right? If you get multiple verticals, um, it, in certain spots in the defense, it becomes man and same issue with mobile quarterbacks. So that's why we're going to pair them with five man peel pressures. Um, and you know, there's a, we, every coach has their different pressures. Um, and there's a huge variety you can, you can get into. Uh, and so I put together a few, um, a few pressures that I like about out of different sets. So there's some 30, there's some 40 fronts. Um, but ultimately we're going to talk about some of the hallmarks that I think make those pressures successful, particularly on second and long. So um, the reason I like, when we say peel, we mean that we're going to bring five guys and the front owns the back. So the running back is going to be covered by a blitzer. Um, if the back releases to either side, the edge blitzer has them. Okay. So, uh, attacking protections with 5-0 looks is, is becoming really common. Uh, walking up a fifth defender, whether it's out of the 30 like you see in the bottom draw diagram or out of the 40 like you see on the top, most offensive lines are going to check to big on big. Uh, and if they don't, they're going to check the full slide, which is honestly even better because now I'm going to get my defensive end on a tailback. Um, you know, I know sometimes you play some high schools and their tailback 
you know, might be the best athlete in the whole school. And, and maybe you would have rather had a better matchup on the guard. Um, but typically, you know, if you're rushing the C gap, if you're trusting the defensive player as an edge rusher, you're going to like that matchup on the back, particularly if it's a defensive end, just size wise, that's tough. Um, so, you know, anytime we can create that, we're either going to get one-on-ones in the front or we're going to get a one-on-one with the back. Uh, and, and I think that that gives us an advantage. Also just some simple things you can move around, um, and really make it hard for offensive lines and create a lot of different looks. So, um, I'm just going to touch on a couple different pressure paths as we go. The first one on the top there, really simple. It's just an over front, you know, with the nose trued up on the center, you could have the nose just in the a gap as well. Okay. And you're bringing the mic from one side of the protection to the other, uh, ripping around the double pick on the inside, particularly if, if the running back is to the mic side, um, you know, this is good. You can kind of turn the slide back uh, and, and bring the mic around it. Um, or the, the running back may be responsible for the back or for the mic, sorry. And then he'll have to follow around. So that three man game is great inside. It lets your edge rushers, you know, be really solid and work the edge uh, there as well. Um, the bottom one, um, similar to the top one and that you got some looping going on anytime in second and long, anytime you can create levels in your pass rush. So you have somebody that's looping. Uh, it helps make screen draw tough um, just because the timing is a little bit different. So it kind of gets you to cover your bases there. And I find that anything helps you with draw helps you with the mobile quarterback. So if you have multiple levels in your pass rush, you have more than one chance, you know, to put a net around that mobile quarterback and, and get them on the ground. Um, I like this, the bottom pressure, out of the 30 because you're showing that five up and then you're ultimately bringing the boundary backer and dropping out the mic. Um, this would be great out of like a three, three stack, walk the mic and your field backer up, um, you know, and then your nose is ripping from the opposite side of the protection, uh, trying to pull that guard with them in the slide. And then your end uh, goes up the field and the backer, the boundary backer rips underneath again, great opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one with the back uh, or create some confusion for that guard. Cause he's got the dropping mic on top of him, the nose working away. And then the backer from the outside ends up coming inside. So if, if the slide is working that way, there's a lot for that guard to think about. Um, and then just the twist on the front side again, uh, you know, you're hopefully turning that tackle in and, and getting a free rusher on the edge, but it's those levels within the pressure that I think, you know, give it some versatility on second down. So a couple other five Oh uh, pressure ideas here. Uh, the bottom one is, or sorry, the left one, uh, is again out of a 40. So this is just out of your typical 40 strong. Um, the, the twist game on the right between the mic and the quick hopefully takes the guard and tackle out of it. Uh, and, you know, your center has to now pass off one-on-one -on -one with that nose and tackle twist with the guard. Uh, again, just making the two sides of the protection talk to each other uh, and work together is a challenge, particularly if you get a stunt to the side of the back. Um, you know, that's a huge challenge for the running back to, uh, you know, be confident and find his player in the traffic there. Um, I think it's great. You know, if you're getting full slide, um, you know, you're getting that T working back across the slide, which can be tough. Uh, and then the bottom one I really like is probably my favorite. You know, you get that 5-0 look and you're ultimately dropping the will out. So now you've got you've gotten that 5-0 look. Hopefully the O-line is going to go five for five uh, and the running back is going to have to go coast to coast. And now we insert a rusher, not even off the edge, but into the you know, the middle of the protection, the B gap there and the running back again, you're hoping in this one that the running backs on the, the defensive right and has to work across the face of the quarterback. But even if he is to the pressure side, to the Sam there, you know, he's going to have to step up, plug in interior B gap and pass protection with the tackle working away and the guard working away. Um, so another way, hopefully you can bring five, but it really feels like six because you're getting them to check into that, into that five Oh look. Here's the last one. This is just out of a 30. Um, so the end starting outside, both ends work back inside. Uh, you got the 5-0 look with the mic and the will walked up. The boundary backer is just locked on the fullback. Um, what I like about this one is ultimately, again, you're peeling the running back. Uh, you're able to double the boundary wideout. Um, so in terms of a structure, I, I like this because uh, you're able to double that boundary wideout if he's a stud. Um, and then we're trying to get uh, you know, whether it's the running back, if the running back's responsible for the will, there's our one-on-one -on -one on the edge, we'll take that. Uh, and if the running back is, you know, if the running back is going coast to coast, okay, we, we've got those one-on-ones inside, you know, now we have the twist game with the mic uh, and the R uh, and the tackle having to set 
to the will and the guard having to set to the quick there who's working uh, that spike technique back inside. So lots of challenges for the O-line up front. Hopefully, again, trying to get uh, our Mike and Will on the edge of the pressure um, so that if we do have a mobile quarterback, you have guys in space that can handle it. Last one here, same thing, able to double the X in 31. Um, you know, if they were going to slide the protection uh, towards that Will, this is another good one. You know, I like you start with the nose shaded on the center, really try and pull him front side and then attack backside with the will. The will can kind of jump the slide here. So what I mean by that is if the center sets to the, the side that the will is, is working to, um, to the will side of the formation there, if the center over overslides, he can jump back to the backside A. And if the center stays front side, uh, you know, if he sets to the field, then you're able to work in the, in the play side A gap there where it's drawn up. Um, you know, the, the two lines for the mic there, the the black uh, arrow there is, is his run responsibility. Uh, and then if, if we get past, he's going to fold out into the B again, trying to open things up for the will. These are probably my favorite, um, especially with mobile quarterbacks. And I've just found, you know, I don't know whether it's been coaching in the same city as Trey Ford um, or coaching in the OPFL recently, but every quarterback seems to be more athletic than, you know, what we were used to defending uh, you know, six, seven, eight years ago. Uh, so these two pressures are, are probably two of my favorite. Uh, we did a video on these. Um, these were our blitzing, uh, blitzing dynamic quarterbacks video um, from Georgia. Uh, so both of these pressures have a spy um, and have someone responsible for the back, but the O-line sees five uh, players in the line of scrimmage. Uh, and so hopefully we're going to get some one-on-one. So in all of these, we're looking to spike two defensive linemen. So on the left, odd mirror, we're looking to spike the rush and the quick inside that, you know, that aggressive attack on the inside of the pocket. We're hoping to flush the quarterback. Uh, the nose is going to, you know, hold his a gap and then loop off the quick. The wills walked up there, but he just has the back. So he can blitz to the back right now to subtract him in protection um, wherever that back shows up. Um, if the back were to release to the opposite side, then we would flip the responsibility of the mic and the will. So an odd mirror, of the nose is always going to loop to the side of the back. If they stay in pistol, you know, if you get a team that's really staying in pistol, uh, one or two good man pressures should get them out of the pistol and pass pro. Um, but if you get a team that's staying in pistol, I would be more likely to blitz uh, than to run the spy stuff. Um, or you can just call it to a side. So if they stay in pistol, you know, we're going to loop the nose to the boundary. Um, maybe a little less effective, but it keeps you solid in terms of not having too many checks. Um, and then the mic is going to work off that stunt with the rush. Uh, again, you're trying to get the quarterback out. So if the if the DN's going inside, get the quarterback out, great. The mic is kind of a delayed rush or, or a spy rusher um, on the quarterback, uh, and the will has the back. If the back releases to the opposite side, you could peel the mic with the back, and now the will becomes the spy. Uh, and this one's probably my favorite. You know, you can mess around with the front. Uh, they call this flush mirror. They walk the two backers up uh, to one side and they have their end and uh, nose who's aligned in the three tech stunt all the way across like two long sticks. So they're really trying to push the quarterback out of the pocket. The mic is going to spy. Um, so if that quarterback tries to get out of the pocket, you know, step up right away, he's, he's not in a rush. The boundary backer is going to loop. Uh, and if that back releases, he'll take it. Um, and if the back stays in, then he's just going to rush the edge, set the edge off the back. And now the mic is going to look to insert the daylight, find the quarterback. So if the quarterback did step up, uh, you know, to the defensive right immediately, say before the nose was able to create penetration, you know, the mic can hang there. Um, and then he's looking to work off that natural pick with the nose, insert and find space. The rush is working a hook rush. So he's flying up the field. Um, speed rush, you know, he cannot go inside. He's got to make that quarterback want to escape towards the side uh, of those two spiking players. So the quarterback's going to see the, the one end go inside, the other end get way up the field. You know, those two linebackers initially are to the right. We're really enticing the quarterback to try and escape uh, to the side of the back here or to the defensive left and then fold both those players over the top. Um, so just th this is great if, if you're looking to disrupt and control mobile quarterbacks. Um, a lot of moving pieces. That's the only challenge. Uh, and you need a spy who can actually finish the deal. Um, that's a huge one. Um, so if you're, if you're coaching this stuff, uh, we found this out with, with Trey Ford when he was playing for the Niagara Spears, probably the most impressive 
summer season I've ever seen. I think he had 50 touchdowns. Um, and, you know, the first time we had a spy on him, but we didn't have the right spy on him. We needed to drastically change, you know, what we were doing defensively uh, late in the year to get guys that could actually make that tackle uh, in that situation. You know, traditionally five years ago, your mic could spy the quarterback. Now you want to make sure you have a guy, you know, that can finish the deal in that situation, whether that's a DB, you know, for us, it was a combination of, of players. Um, but uh, it makes a big difference. You got to have a guy that can actually finish the deal. So try lock as a coverage. Um, we'll talk about why I like it so much here, but first, you know, in terms of what is try lock, I have it drawn up to a three receiver surface here on the next drawing. I'll show you the two receiver surface. Um, but if you just get two receivers, you just get the triangle. Uh, if you get three receivers, you get the triangle plus one. So what I mean by that is in the triangle, you have your inside wall player. Uh, that's the Sam in this diagram. They're inside and underneath three until three is out or two is in. Uh, okay. And then you have your high wall player. Um, they're going to lean on number two heavy on the vertical. If two is in or out, so they're not vertical, then they can push to number two. Okay. And the outside wall player uh, is going to be playing outside leverage. They need to play off a little bit because they don't have guaranteed vertical help. Um, so how aggressive you are with that player will kind of depend on how good your free safety is and how good they are as a vertical coverage player. But they're the out, we call them the outside wall. They have the first outbreaker and they have to carry what we say one in the triangle um, well, who's really the number two in this drawing? Cause we have three receivers. Um, you know, if it's three receivers, you have number two, if it's two receivers, it's number one, uh, un unless two is out. Okay. So they have number, they have that outside guy, the Y in this case, unless two is out. Um, and if it's three receivers, our plus one is we're man to man on the third receiver. We call that Meg our man everywhere he goes. Um, so, and that's how the coverage is built. So we'll get through some route fits there. What do we like about it again? Looks like zone plays like man, built in leverage, uh, and you can challenge routes at the sticks. Um, you know, certain route combinations create man coverage and, and mobile QBs can be a problem. That's why we like pairing them with the five man pressures. Here's another one here with the three man stunt. Uh, I just drew up with a bit of a stem. Another thing you can do, obviously, on second and long is get a little more creative with the pressure uh, and, and put yourself in a situation where, you know, you might have some movement pre snap. Um, and, and and put the offensive line in a situation with their guests and right to the end. Um, so that there I just have guys stemming inside and getting into that three-man game we saw uh, in the first diagram just a little differently with the backers on the edge um, and the ends ending up in the three-man stunt. So try lock examples, just some route fits. So if we get two verticals, right, if you get your classic post fade or, uh, or you know, three or four vert combination like we see here, um, the low wall player is running with three. Okay. No one goes in or out. We're just going to keep running and essentially end up playing man to man on number three inside and underneath. So if it becomes a slant dig, he can't get wrapped inside. He's inside and underneath the three all the way. That's the green diagram there. Uh, the free safety is going to play on top of three, really lean on number three, um, until three is out. In this case, three isn't out. So we're all over three. Uh, if we get both verticals, the free safety is on top of number three. Okay. And then the, uh, the field half in this case, who's, who's the outside wall player, they've got two up and out unless three is out. Okay. Um, or until three is out. And in this case, both guys are vertical. Uh, and again, the free safety or field corner, sorry, it's just in man to man. So in this case, obviously if, if the Y receiver is a stud, your field half, you know, probably needs to be a pretty good player. If you're going to get a lot of this concept. Um, because that ultimately becomes man for the free safety. Now the field, the or sorry, the field half, the free safety is in a position to help late, particularly if you can use your outside leverage to deter the receiver from getting outside, right? Keep him inside. It makes a huge difference. So what if we get, you know, routes that don't both go vertical. So the, here, the Sam or the low wall players inside, and this job would be the same for the will uh, on the other side of the field. We'd play the triangle between the will, the halfback and the corner. Um, the Sam is inside and underneath, uh, the first in break in route. So we're going to carry three As soon as two breaks in that field half is calling in, 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 and now the Sam's got it. So that's what I mean by leverage on, on routes at or near the sticks. Okay. We're not having to chase that route. We have built in leverage in the concept. Um, so that's a great situation to try and create a turnover tip ball interception, um, where we're able to leverage that route immediately and play it like man. Uh, now the field half can fall underneath of number two. Um, 
or in this case, number three with a three man surface uh, and try and get underneath uh, the vertical as it comes out of here from number two, really bracketing the vertical of number two uh, and, and the free safety can stay on top of it. One more thing on this one, another phrase that I've heard said a lot is we want to have leverage on the underneath stuff and a double on the vertical. So this is great if you're getting those routes where one guy's going vertical and one guy's going uh, underneath in those triangles. Second one here, uh, now it's just the opposite. Number three ends up going out. So you get your fade out combination. Now your field half who has outside leverage on two is going to have built in leverage on that out by number three. The free safety can now push over top of number two uh, and take away um, that that seam ball. Okay, being again playing everything top down, uh, and then the the inside wall player. And and this isn't easy, and you're not going to get all the way to the receiver, but you can make the throw harder. We want to now try and push and get inside and underneath of that vertical. You know, and if we can do that again, tips and overthrows uh, create turnovers in the secondary, and that's a huge opportunity. Um, you know, for, for the defense, if that Sam can get even three quarters of the way inside and underneath number two, and now they're in position where if this becomes a dig, um, to be able to play underneath the dig and bracket the dig with the free safety drive concept. So now, uh, as two comes under our low wall player has to take it. Uh, and then as three tries to work back inside the free safety is able to take it. Uh, and the field half is able to fold on top in case you get double move. Uh, again, just bracketing that route. Um, you can teach the field half and free safety to kind of alternate on this and say, okay, if he breaks in, the field half will drop deep to make sure it's not, you know, a dig and go. Uh, and if he goes out, the the field half can take it and the free safety can drop dig deep to make sure it's not a double move as well. Okay, so that brings us to kind of our third one. Again, if you guys got questions, please throw them in the chat. Um, if you're watching, throw a like on the video. It helps us out a ton. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you hit subscribe. It helps us out a ton. Just helps us reach more people. Um, so the more likes and, and comments we have in the video, the, you know, the more people it's going to be able to reach. So the third version, uh, or the third option, in my opinion, um, that helps you uh, is being able to run some simulated pressure, right? And there's definitely a place for for just pure pressure. Um, you know, being able to bring six guys and play man maybe play cover one and peel um, those options. There's a place for that. Uh, you know, I've just found, especially as a defensive coordinator, if you're looking to play all the way to the championship game, you're eventually going to play some really high level offenses and some really high uh, level offensive coordinators. And if that's all you do, I think it creates problems. Uh, you know, if you're an elite man coverage team, that's amazing. Um, but it, it's just hard to have that many great athletes. Uh, and, and so I think having compliments to that, even if you are a big man pressure person, you know, if you want to try and create turnovers, making it look like man, um, quarterback gets rid of the ball. And now it's playing like zone, you know, that can be huge for you. So, uh, a simulated pressure or a sim pressure is just a way of creating pressure while you're still bringing four or five. Uh, I think the definition's a little loose there. Um, but basically you're not playing man. So you're still able to play zone and you're not really having to play like fire zone where you might only have six or seven or six guys in, in zone coverage. Um, you're able to play more stable traditional zone coverages. So advantages, it looks like pressure. We talked about, you know, creating pressure, uh, or creating the appearance of pressure. Um, it looks like pressure right away, uh, speeds the quarterback up right from the start. Usually you're going to walk one or two guys down here. Um, it lets you bring a non-traditional blitzer, uh, whether that's a halfback or an outside linebacker. Um, and if you have mobile quarterbacks, that's huge. Again, I think one of the best lessons I've learned in, in defensive football is especially on second down, um, you got to bring guys that can get home, right? So we got to have guys that can actually get there, actually affect the quarterback. You know, if our Mike's a great run defender, um, but he's not a great blitzer, then we're not going to get the benefit of blitzing a fifth or sixth guy if that Mike is involved. Um, and, and that's, you know, I think something that as an old lineman, it just makes total sense to me, right? We're, we're quite happy when we're only getting the mic and the will and pressure. Um, it, it makes our job easier, even when those pressures are creative. Um, so looking at this top one here to kind of contradict myself, it is the mic and will and pressure, but you're dropping both defensive ends. So in this case, you're only bringing four. I'll get to the, the linebacker path in a sec. Uh, but you're able to play whatever your base coverages are. So I put in cover four, um, you know, with your basic, you know, your flat, your hook to curls, um, your two vertical players on the posts or seams, 
you know, your field corners playing off, splitting one and two, and your boundary corner, whether you want to cut and carry or just play him off. Uh, either way, um, you know, you're able to to get those four vertical defenders. If you're a cover three team, you know, that's fine too. Uh, whatever your base zone coverage is, this lets you play your base zone coverages. You're still dropping eight. Um, and so that lets you play whatever your base zone coverage is. You can play it, um, which I think is beneficial, obviously, um, in terms of carryover and creating efficiencies uh, for your players. Um, some adjustments to the coverage, you know, might – have to happen based on who's dropping or the guy you're blitzing. So for example, in the second diagram, you're blitzing the boundary halfback. So you might play a version of your cover four with all the same jobs, but you're going to need different people to do some of those jobs. So there are some changes, but you know, it's often easier to change one guy's job than, than change six guys jobs on the back end. Um, and, you know, good things about zone coverage. And I think oftentimes, you know, we're assuming that new things are always better and, and there's a, you know, playing zone is a spectrum. There's a number of ways you can do it. But being able to vision the quarterback has value in creating turnovers, right? It's hard to intercept the ball you're not looking at. And if you're playing man coverage principles, whether they're a part of, um, whether they're a part of match coverage or it's man to man, you know, you don't want, you don't want the, the man coverage players looking at the quarterback, right? So being able to vision the quarterback in zone can help. Um, the techniques are often familiar, uh, which we, we alluded to before is a strength. Um, you can manage the matchups. So you're not bringing five or six. You're able to, you know, help on, on significant offensive players. Uh, and it's better for mobile quarterbacks because, you know, your hook to curl players, your flat players, again, they can vision the quarterback uh, at times. So you're not having everyone getting run off and, and lots of room for the quarterback. Uh, you can lose leverage at the sticks, right? You can get run off. You can get zone stretched. Um, you can get guys lose leverage. Uh, so that can happen, you know. Um, that's that's part of the challenge and hopefully that's why you're getting pressure that's why you're not just dropping uh, you know and playing straight quarters or, or straight cover three uh, and you can get potential you know formations can mess you up a little bit whether that's four by one three by one two by three whatever it is 13 uh, you know if, if you're not really sound and how you adjust to those from his own standpoint so not not perfect but again I think the vision on the quarterback can be huge especially if you're looking for interceptions. So this top diagram, uh, Mac used to do this all the time. Um, we didn't play them this year. So maybe they, you know, maybe apologies to coach Brady. Maybe they did um, do it this year. Uh, but I even remember, you know, two or three years ago, uh, this stunt given a lot of teams problems, um, you know, so it gives you, you know, you're just your wide presentation, um, your, your nose and your, your tackler, both in the B gap, you're ultimately going to drop both your ends, but you know, most protections, those tackles are set into those ends at least initially. Um, and then the best way that I would play it is the linebacker away from the back goes first. So if the back declares early in protection, and again, you can walk up to get them to do that. Um, you know, obviously there's benefits of hitting it from depth too, but if you're a blitzing team, you know, for the most part, that back better get up there. Um, and so if the back walks up, you can bring the mic first the center should have him as the player on away from the back. The slide should be working to the mic. And if that mic uh, is able to turn the center back into the boundary, the will oftentimes is going to come free or the running back's going to have to cross the quarterback's face. Now we're getting a one-on-one -on -one in the A gap across the quarterback's face. And we're only bringing four, you know, that's a huge advantage um, to the defense uh, here. I just have the quarterback or the, the quick dropping over the ball and the rush replacing the hook to curl. Um, you know, the, the coverage rotating, you know, into the boundary just to show a bit of a different look. Um, we've done this a little bit uh, in Cambridge before when we have two really good receivers in the boundary, um, just gets the will out of that pass coverage. So for example, if you didn't want to rotate the coverage, your quick might have to be the hook to curl player in the boundary, which is fine, if, especially if your quick is a good athlete. Um, but, you know, it, it can also be about matchups, right? So if that, if that team's best two receivers, I think we did this against Hamilton, uh, when they had a really, really good player in the boundary. And I just didn't want our end involved in our pass distribution in the boundary. So gave the boundary end a little bit of an easier job. If you rotate the coverage the other way, the rush would just drop to the middle of the field and the quick would be the hook to curl player in the boundary. Uh, this is kind of a compliment to it on the bottom. Again, same jobs, coverage is the same, same presentation. Um, but now we're going to drop those two interior guys out. Um, so say you end up getting full slide um, because the, you have the threat of those interior rushers. They don't want the back on an interior rusher. Now you're going to loop your end back inside. So with, as those guys disappear, the end's going to show up and again, create that second level in the pass rush. 
And now you get your non-traditional blitzer off the edge uh, with the boundary halfback. Great point from, uh, from coach V uh, there in the chat and coaches like, I would, I would love for everyone to, you know, contribute and throw some stuff in here about what they think or what they do or, or successes or, or struggles they've had with some of this type of stuff. But Coach V brings up a great point. You can switch the DNs and the linebackers. I remember Mac did that, uh, and they had two great defensive ends in, in Kashik and Mark Mackey. And uh, I remember looking at, at our O-line coach at the time and going, that's not – I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> that's, that's a challenge that I wasn't signing up for um because now you got to make some decisions in your protection you know how are you changing your protection is your running back going to still block that guy um is your running back going to now block an edge guy um you know where maybe he's not as good one-on-one -on -one. you don't want him in that situation um so it's tough it creates challenges it's a great point uh, uh from coach v there um so the bottom one i i, I love this um just because you're getting that non-traditional rusher and second level in the pass rush um, so again, you're only bringing four. It's not like it's, hey, this is guaranteed to get home. Um, but creating levels in the pass rush and, and bringing that non-traditional rusher can really help with mobile quarterbacks. I just threw a few more examples in here. So this is the first one we talked about. Um, and again, you could have this be simpler, just sending both the mic and the will. You don't necessarily have to cross them. You don't necessarily have to have, you know, the cross be based on the back. But to me, that is the, the hardest thing to deal with from a protection standpoint, if you can get your guys to do that. Here's the second one again. And the coverage, you know, you have all the freedom in the world. If you want to play double cut, double hold, cover three, cover four, how you play your quarters, you know, this is just some of the terminology I've used. But, um, you know, I think being able to do that is huge in that you don't have to, you know, play a different coverage with this creative pressure. Um, you know, you're just playing coverage as you play every down, uh, which can help your guys a ton. This is one, uh, and these last couple are, are similar. Um, so this is out of four down, just kick the end inside and walk the mic up on the edge. So another 5-0 look, um, which I know we've talked about a lot. I'm a huge proponent of just because I know as an O-line guy how often teams just get into 5-0 protection. Um, and it's going to create one-on-ones and it creates challenges. Now you don't have a slide side in your protection. You got five one-on-ones. Now stunts are that much more effective. Um, and it also just creates confusion for the running back, you know, who who they have. You know, and often the offensive coordinator thinks it's simple, but you know, executing it on the field is a challenge. So here, uh, you know, it's just a weak front. Ultimately, we're going to loop the tackle back to be the contained player to the boundary. If you could set this off the back, that'd be great. That's obviously some next level stuff. Um, here, we're going to drop the mic out to the hook to curl, drop the R to that OTB drop or over the ball drop. Basically, your your middle of the field hook player. Uh, and then the will is going to drop to the hook to curl. You know, you could walk the will up on the edge if you wanted to um, and drop to the hook to curl as well. Um, but ultimately you're still playing quarters or cover three, whatever your base coverage is. And now in terms of protection, really they have two options. Either you're going to get your blitzer on the back because the back is to the side of the blitzer in, in the protection, which I'll take. Um, or if the slide is going to the pressure, now your end and your nose working back uh, in those two one-on-ones on the man side uh, and making that guard and center communicate from zone side back to the man side with that three-man twist. I think it's going to be really tough. Uh, th this puts a lot of pressure on uh, the man side of the protection. Um, and, you know, if you're able to hold up that offensive tackle uh, on the walk down mic, uh, it's just a real challenge uh, for the slide side to even pick up that Sam. Obviously, you know, if they execute and they pick up the Sam, at least you have one of your most athletic guys where if he creates pressure, he can hopefully, you know, find his way to the quarterback. Um, and uh, after that initial rush. So this is a similar concept uh, just out of a five-man pressure. Um, so here, you know, if we're not dropping the R out, um, absolutely there, Coach, I saw a virtual football clinic. Should get a nice one-on-one -on -one with the running back, uh, with the Sam tackle stepping down. Gives the Sam a two-way go. Absolutely. It's a tough one. This one here is, is, is really tough, uh, I think, because you're still bringing the fifth guy, especially in high school. And I've, and I've found, you know, in summer ball, even really good offenses, we don't get as much, you know, mesh and we don't get as much stuff underneath uh, in the middle of the field. Um, and so I think you can play zone effectively at a lot of levels with four guys underneath, maybe not every down, certainly not without, you know, creating pressure. But I think if you create that pressure, you can get away with four guys underneath. Um, and, you know, here you're dropping the mic out. 
twisting the tackle away, same stunt. Now you're just being able to bring that Sam inside. So again, if the slide side is coming to the pressure, the slide's got to deal with that, that twist between the Sam and the rush. Um, and if it is, we're going to get our two crashing guys on the one-on-one uh, and the loop from the three t- or from the one tech to the boundary. If the slide side's going towards the stunt, um, you know, probably uh, that, that guard is joining the slide with the, with the tackle aligned in a one technique. And now again, you're going to get a really, uh, a really challenging situation for the back in protection on the Sam on the inside. So the downside here is obviously you only have four underneath uh, or you only have three on top. I should say you can make those decisions, um, you know, however many guys you want to have underneath or, or vertically, um, but you're down one guy in the coverage. Uh, but I think at a lot of, at a lot of levels, uh, if you're not getting throws over the middle, short over the middle of the field, um, you know, it, it's, it's a functional way to do it. So that's all I got uh, for today, guys. Thanks so much for being on here. It's our first one. Uh, big thanks to, uh, to Coach Sharbs at Virtual Football Clinic for giving me some tech support on this. I really hope you guys can hear me um, or else I've just been talking about nothing for a while. It's uh, definitely something that's new for us with the live stuff. But I just thought it was a great way to, you know, hopefully connect and answer some questions. If you guys have questions, throw them in the chat. Um, and like I said, if you haven't already, you know, there's 21 people watching right now. People have come through. If you could like the video um, and, and leave a comment, uh, it helps it get to more people. Um, and then click the bell for notifications. Just comes to your phone when we're going to go live or when we post a new video. Um, and, and that helps us get out to more people too. So um, there's our social media stuff. Uh, we're having some great conversations on Twitter right now. I think it's one of my favorite things we're doing with the program is, is trying to ask, you know, one question every weekday morning and, and tag some coaches, high school programs, you, you sport coaches, NCAA coaches um, about Canadian topics. You know, I think you see a lot of stuff on Twitter about American stuff. Um, and that's great. There's a lot to be learned from that. Uh, but I also think it's it would be great if we get some of that conversation going on north of the border. Because if this, you know, experiment has taught me anything, it's just a lot of great coaches up here doing great stuff. Um, so if, if you throw your Twitter, if you want to get involved in some of those questions, throw your Twitter in the chat, if I don't already know it, um, and I'm happy to tag you in some of those, um, but they should be coming out, you know, most weekday mornings when I get a chance. So thanks so much for being here for our first live uh, episode. And if anyone has any questions, just throw them in the chat. Appreciate it, Coach Smart and uh, and Coach Horn. You guys have been day one supporters. I think, Coach V, you were famously our third subscriber. So we're doing a little better than that now. What are we at? 656. So big ups to Coach V for helping me out there. All right, awesome, guys. If there's, if there's no questions or if something comes up later, you know, hit me up on social media, at uh, 3downDev on Twitter and at 3downDevelopment. Uh, on Instagram. Um, and uh, as always, share share our stuff when you can. Um, it helps us reach more people uh, and create a bigger conversation. But thanks so much, guys. And uh, everybody have a great night and we'll have more stuff. I'm, I'm excited. We're interviewing uh, Ty Cats OC Tommy Condell on Thursday. So stay tuned for that this weekend. Appreciate it, Coach V. I think a lot of that stuff, I don't know whether I got it all from you because you taught it to me or just I've seen it over the last five years, but it's not all. A lot of that stuff is just stuff I've already seen. So appreciate it. And Chaz, I appreciate the clarification on where you're coaching, boss. Good question, uh, uh, Kevin, in the chat. Are you too high on second down? Um, We're like in our quarter structure, we're kind of too high a lot in that our boundary half is often in cut and we're usually carrying the corner to that side. So that boundary halfback is kind of playing like the boundary seam or the boundary hash. So I guess we're kind of too high. Um, I would say a lot, uh, not just on second down. If that's how you, det- if, if that's what you mean by too high. Um, yeah. So we would stay in that same structure um, a lot. Uh, on second down as well. You know, I just think it coming back to point number one, it deters the vertical. Um, It deters throwing, taking shots, you know, down the seams um, and and throwing, you know, those deep routes in the middle of the field, which are the easier of the deep routes to complete. 
So we're not always too high on second down. Like there's, again, like there's a great time for, for pressure. And um, you know, some of that, like, I think if we had had a season this summer for, for summer ball, you know, we would have been doing some of the max stuff, like the three high uh, three or four underneath fire zone stuff. So not always there's great stuff out of, out of one high or three high on second down too. Um, but uh, I think if you, if, if you can build in, it depends on your answers and your matchups too. So like if you can play cover one, cover one's amazing, right? Uh, Cause you can bring pressure and it's, it's really sound when you're talking about being sound and, and easy to teach. Um, you know, th- there's great stuff there. It's just hard if you can't hang in uh, all the time and cover one um, that can be a challenge for sure. All right, guys, that's awesome. If there's no more questions, I'll uh, I'll end this thing. But that was great, and and we'll be back next Tuesday. Um, thanks for helping us spread the word and being here on our first one.